Here we have the Dell Latitude E7450. This is the same thing as this E7440, just the new model. We can open up and explore the insides. Remember to put your laptop on something soft so you don't damage it or scratch it when you remove it around. And we're going to flip it to the back for, to begin. So if you haven't removed your battery, remove it. We're going to remove the back cover and there's two screws holding the back cover down. One here and one here. I already removed it and afterwards you drag the back cover down and then you lift it up to remove it. So here's the hard drive. Wireless 3G, 4G card. Your wireless card. RAM slot 1, RAM slot 2. So maximum 16 gigs in total. CPU, CPU fan, and LCD cable. For, for your hard drive, there's three screws holding your hard drive down. I don't have a hard drive cage. Here's there's a LC, there's a hard drive cable. Pull on it. It's to detach your cable from your motherboard. So to remove the wireless card, we need to remove one screw holding it down. Remember to remove your antenna cables. After we remove the screw, the wireless card should pop up, but um, my one doesn't since uh, there's double sided stick tape on it for some reason. So I'm just going to leave it there. So here's the RAM. You can pull out the two sides and the RAM pops up. So there's two slots, so that's maximum 16 gigs, like I said before, of DDR3 L RAM. So 8 gigs in each slot. So here's your RAM, if you can see it. So next, we're going to remove the keyboard cover. To do that, we're going to have to remove all these screws I'm pointing to now. There's a fair number of screws. And here, there's this latch. This is where your keyboard and other stuff are connected to. You need to remove these cables. There's four of them. So one is fingerprint reader, the other one is NFC, one is keyboard, and the other one's keyboard backlight. So with the screws, there's actually two types of screws, P, PI, and D. That's free, but anyway. So just going to show you, this is the P, they are smaller screws. Next to the screw hole, it has the letter. So D and PI are the same screw. So that's why I said there's two types, when there's actually three. So here is what a PI looks like. PI and D are the same. It's a lot bigger than your normal P.
So after removing this screw here, you actually can remove your fan and unplug it if you wish. Well, this other screw as well. So after removing these two screws, you can actually remove your fan. But I'll leave it in for now. Now we need to flip it around to remove the keyboard as there's a few screws stuck under the keyboard. So you need your prying tool. You need to remove the keyboard bezel. It's a plastic thing that covers your keyboard. These are only held down by plastic clips. So just go around, start at the top. It has holes and gaps for you, for you to sh shove your prying tool in. There's screws on your keyboard that we have to remove. There should be around five or six in total. After you remove the screws, you're going to need a prying tool. This part is quite hard. So you need to move your keyboard. You're supposed to move your keyboard down first and then lift it up. But since my laptop is new, it's a bit stiff. So I have to pry my bottom half open, the bottom part open first to lift it up. Please note there's clips on the left and the right hand side as well that holds your keyboard down. So remember to take a note of that. So here you go, I'm just showing you there's left and right hand clips, clips on the side. <coughs> just take your time and it will just come out eventually. Don't worry about it breaking as it's quite hard for it to break. It's pretty tough. Just to show you, you need to slot your cables back under your mouse pad again to put it back in. So there's screws on the keyboard, should be around 5 or 6 of them. And you also have to remove your cables. So one of them is your LC your lights, your key uh, indication lights, and the other one is your trackpad.
So now that we've removed all the screws, you're going to need your prying tool to go around the edges to remove it. Just going to get my prying tool. So we just need to go around the edge and remove it. So now that I have pried out the edges, when you lift it up, remember to put your monitor, your screen all the way back as you need to lift it up and slide it downwards to remove it. Just going to show you again. We're now going to remove the LCD screen. So to remove the LCD screen, you have to remove a few screws. So one, two, three, four, five, and there's actually six. Don't know where the sixth one went, but yep. Removing the LCD is a bit tricky, as um, there's also screws on behind the LCD screen behind the hinge as well that I'll show you later and to remove the LCD screen you have to remove the hinge cover those little square tabs Here. So now I'm going to show you where the screws are on the back. So there's these two screws we need to remove. You also need to remove your LCD cable and also your web camera cable and your wireless antennas. So there's a plate holding your LCD screen cable down or cover. There's one screw holding it down. You have to remove the screw and remove the metal cover to remove it. There's a black tab there. You can hold and just pull on it, yank on it and it'll come off. Also remove this cable which your, it should be your web camera cable, your microphone web camera and you need to slot through the hole both the antenna and the thing needs to go through the hole so I'm just going to remove the screws on the back to remove this hinge cover I'm just going to flip it over now. So this is a bit tricky. So it comes off slightly easy, but a bit hard. So you just need to wiggle it and wobble it, and it comes off. For the other one, I need to open the LCD screen slightly for my for me to remove it. So now, here you go, once you remove it, the cables come out, remember to slide your cables through the hole. The antenna cable comes out easily, but your LCD cable is actually quite hard, 
I rem rem um, recommend you to remove your power cable as it gets in the way and by removing the power cable it's uh, quite useful it makes it a lot easier to, to slide your LCD cable through so here you go I happen to remove the LCD screen by sliding it through the hole sorry I couldn't show you on camera as it's a bit hard just to show you here I removed the power cable from the slot it opens up the hole and makes it a lot easier to slide it through so now we're going to remove the motherboard there's five screws holding the motherboard down you need to remove the cable oh, there's actually six screws so you need to remove the yellow cable is your daughter board connection and your speaker cable is also connected Here's your speaker cable. Just pull on it and it comes off. So I had to remove my wireless card, as you remember before. I had double sided sticky tape on it. And after I remove it, it just comes off. So yours might come with double sided sticky tape, so just be wary of that. So the fan came off while I was flipping it around. So previously I told you, you can remove the fan just by removing the two screws. So I'm just going to show you there's uh, two screws on the fan, so you can disassemble it and clean it. So there's two clips holding your fan down to the plastic cover. So just pry your clips open. So the clips are metal, so it doesn't matter if you pry it too much, it just bends, just bend it back in place, so it's not a big deal. So mine's quite new, so there's actually no dust on it. So I'm just going to put it back. So as you can see, I bent one of my clips too much. Just bend it back. Remember to align your 
metal cover properly so you can put the screws in. Now we're going to remove the heatsink and replace the thermal paste. So there's four screws holding the heatsink down. Next to the heatsink, there's actually numbers. You don't need to remove the screws in any order. Just when you put it back, follow the numbers on the heatsink. When you replace, when you remove the heatsink, you need to replace the thermal paste and don't be cheap on your thermal paste you don't use thermal paste basically once in your life for your laptop and it's pretty cheap, it's only $10 and you can use the $10 for 15 times or 15 applications so these screws come off generally heatsink screws don't come off, it just stays on so after you, oh this is your bias battery that black thing, some people ask about it so here you go so we need to, I'm going to get a towel to clean off the thermal paste here's my towel you don't need any special liquids or alcohol solutions just a basic towel and just with your, with your hands just rub it off it should come off pretty easily just clean it as much as possible don't have to be too clean it's not a big deal so here you go after I clean the heating a lot more clean so here's the thermal paste I'm using Noctur NTH1 this costs $10 so don't be cheap on it so since there's two areas on the CPU we need to put, apply thermal paste on the smaller one put a half a rice grain on it and the bigger one, put a one rice grain size of thermal paste on it. So I'm just going to show you the numbers on the heating. So one's there, two, one, two, three, three's here, and four's there. So put it over the top, do not press it down until you have aligned the screw with the screw hole. Then you can press it down. Try not to press it down and use the screws to screw in the to press it down actually. But if you have pressed it down, it's not a big deal. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. This disassembly is relatively really hard to get all the way to the motherboard. There's a lot of screws and a lot of steps, but just to access your basic things like wireless card and hard drive, RAM, it's actually really simple. Uh, since it's the Latitude series, it's made easy for you to change and replace parts. Thanks for watching.